Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again here on the mat today. Um, before we get started, just a couple of things. Uh, so what you're going to need for this practice is um, obviously a space to practice. So if you have a mat, great. If not, that's okay too. You can totally do this on um, just a carpet or even a beach towel or blanket if you have one. Um, and then you're going to need just something to prop up on just in the beginning of practice here today. So if you have some yoga blocks at home, you could use those. But if not, you can always take a blanket. Um, it doesn't have to be a yoga blanket necessarily. It could be any kind of blanket that you can just kind of like fold up and sit up on. Or you could even use a pillow or two just from your couch or um, a chair or something. Um, and then uh, one other thing is that right in the beginning of practice, we're going to do a breathing exercise where we're required to touch our face. So um, if you want to take a moment to go and wash your hands uh, or even grab some hand sanitizer because we're going to practice the same breathing exercise once again at the end of practice. Um, so if you want to have some hand sanitizer next to you or you can always pause me and go wash your hands again too. Um, so we'll go ahead and make sure you collect everything you need before we start. Um, and then also, um, I'll suggest that you take a moment here to maybe put on some music that you love to practice to, maybe something soft and relaxing, or maybe light a candle or two. Um, just take, a, take some time to make this time really sacred and special for yourself. You've carved this time out for yourself, so might as well go all out here today. So go ahead and do that. And when you're all set, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by coming to a comfortable cross-legged seat on the mat. Um, here is one spot where you might want to use something that you've acquired here to practice. You might fold up a blanket to sit on. You might prop, prop up on a pillow or a block. Or you might just be flat on the floor too. <clears throat> so go ahead and make yourself comfortable here. You can bring your hands to the thighs for a moment. Maybe take a moment to roll the shoulders forward, up to the ears, back and down. And then go ahead and just let your eyes close here. Maybe just take a soft gaze out at the floor in front of you. Let's all take a nice, deep, full inhale together. Open up the mouth, exhale with a sigh. Let's do that once more. Deep, full breath in. And deep breath out with a sigh. And make sure you exhale completely. So maybe squeeze the belly button in. Squeeze out every last stale drop of air that you've got down in the bottom of the belly. And then let the next inhale be deep and full of nice, fresh air. Fill yourself up with fresh air. And then just take a moment to, like I said, if you haven't already, maybe close the eyes or take a soft gaze. Just take a moment to arrive here on your mat. Feel that floor underneath you, holding you up. Feel the sitting bones pressing down into whatever you're sitting on. Feel the spine growing nice and long. And then tune into your breath for a moment. Come to notice what the breath feels like today, right now. Maybe tune into what it sounds like today. Just let that breath continue on a nice, natural rhythm. 
as we take these few moments here to really arrive on our mat, really drop in, I'm just going to chat a little bit about something called Santosha, which you may or may not have heard of before. It's one of the niyamas that comes from the Yoga Sutras. It's an ancient yogic text. And the niyamas are the five observances that are written about. So these are five observances, um, just concepts of life. And Santosha is one of them. And it translates to the idea of contentment in life. So this point in time may be a great opportunity to begin to explore this sense of contentment in our lives. Where in our daily life, both now and in a normal time, we're really often inundated with um, the feeling that we need more. We're um, constantly receiving intake from advertisements and um, you know, places to go, information to gather, new things, new things that we don't have. We need them, we need them. And um, that's kind of just a message that we get constantly. And while some of these things are really great and, and life enriching, um, they can also be overwhelming and stressful and leave us with a sense that we are not enough just as we are. So when we get to take the time to slow down and practice really listening, tuning in, noticing how we feel about contentment in our lives. Um, it's kind of the practice of, it's the opposite. It's like the not seeking all of these new things. So the contentment really comes from what we already have. It's a process of really allowing ourselves to open up our hearts and our minds and notice what we have that we're so grateful for already, just as we are. And Ralph Gates in his book, Meditations from the Mat, writes about this practice of seeking Santosha. And he writes that instead of seeking contentment from the outside in, we find contentment from the inside out. And what better a place to begin to practice that than on our yoga mat, right? So I invite you today as we move through our poses to kind of tune into that um, and explore the feeling of contentment that the various poses um, give you. So um, I'll just invite you to notice at certain times, um, maybe you're in a certain pose and you're so worried about striving to take it further, get to the next level. Maybe you're worried about what it looks like from the outside, but really it's leaving you with a great feeling on the inside that maybe you've been missing because you're worried about where you could be, what you don't have. So we'll just be tuning into this a few times during the practice today as we move through our shapes. And I'll invite you to keep that in mind. And if nothing else, um, just Remember that this is your time that you've carved out for yourself. So please allow yourself to really be present here on your mat. Allow anything else that's happening in your world to kind of drift, um, zone out for, for these, next, these next hour or so. And just allow yourself the gift of being really present here on your mat. Let's take one more nice deep full breath in together, really fill up the body. And then open up the mouth, exhale. And gently 
blink the eyes back open for a moment. We're going to take a moment to practice a, a pranayama exercise, a breathing exercise called Nadi Shodhana. So you're going to take your left hand, flip it up toward the sky, and then bring your thumb and your forefinger to touch. So you kind of tuck the thumb, uh, the, the fingernail of the first finger into the first crease of the thumb that makes a Gyana Mudra, it's a wisdom seal. And then you're going to take your right hand, bring it up in front of your face, make a fist, and then release the thumb and the ring finger, and the pinky usually comes along. And then you're going to take the ring finger, place it outside your left nostril, and place the thumb outside the right nostril. So we're going to use these fingers like valves to open and close the two sides of the nose. So I'm going to talk you through a couple rounds here. First, before we begin, let's take a nice deep full breath in through both nostrils. And then a deep breath out through both. And again, exhale completely, empty all the way out. And then at the bottom of that exhale, you're going to Lock the right nostril with the thumb and inhale through just the left for a count of four, three, two, one. Close the left nostril, exhale out the right for four, three, two, one. Inhale through the right side for a count of four, three, two, one. And then close the right side, exhale out the left for four. That was one round. Next time you inhale, it'll be back through the left side for a count of four, three, two, one. Close the left nostril, exhale out the right for four. Inhale through the right side for four. Close the right side, exhale out the left for four. And then go ahead and continue in this horseshoe breathing pattern just for a few more rounds on your own. Um, this is uh, exercise, the exercise Nadi Shodhana is a Kriya, it's a cleansing technique and it's said to bring a sense of calm and also balance to the mind. Go ahead and keep going. If it's giving you any um, anxiety or making you feel not good, go ahead and let it go. You can just come to sit for a few moments more and breathe through. And notice as you sit here, if you're kind of holding any tension in the shoulders, can you maybe soften them? Or um, if you're sort of caving in at the heart, can you open up the shoulders? the left nostril. There's no rush to get there, so go ahead and finish your last round. You'll come to release both hands back to the thighs. Take a moment, maybe close the eyes again for a moment here and just notice the effects of this breathing practice. Start to tune in to your inside. Notice how you are, how you feel. And then gently blink your eyes back open once again. We're going to come off of whatever you're sitting on. And we're going to make our way now into Virasana. Um, so what that looks like is this. You're going to come to actually stand up on the shins at first. You'll untuck the toes so the toenails are down into the mat and then sit back toward the heels. So this is um, kind of a, uh, an intense posture, I'll say. So this is why I asked you to get your blanket or your pillow. Um, so what you can do here is take your pillow or your blocks if you have them or your blanket Kind of fold it up, place it 
between your ankles as best as you can and then sit back just so you have a little bit of support there. I have my blocks here so I'm going to use those so go ahead and get situated. come to arrive here in Virasana, shape number two. Pull the shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Sit up nice and tall. And with a big inhale, you'll stretch the arms out and all the way up alongside the ears. When you get here, press the palms together, interlace the fingers, and flip the palms up to the sky. Yeah, feel yourself get really long in the spine. Give yourself a nice stretch there. Imagine the vertebra kind of stretching apart from one another, get a little taller. You might want to lean a little bit side to side, get out a few kinks here. And then pause in the middle, take one more breath in, press up through the palms, and then go ahead and gently release. Go ahead and roll the shoulders, shake it out. And then with your next inhale, you'll open up the arms way out to a T. Spread your fingers out nice and wide. The thumbs are pointing up toward the sky. Take a big inhale here, open even wider. Move the backs of the hands toward the wall behind you. And then as you exhale, you're gonna give yourself a big hug. Wrap the right arm on top of the left and bring the hands to the back of the body. You might feel your shoulder blades here for a moment. Give yourself a little massage. And then you can stay just like this or begin to release the hands. Bring the backs of the hands to touch or maybe even the palms. Come into eagle arms here. And then just take a moment to pause and feel. Let the shoulders soften away from the ears and press the elbows away from you. A little bit. So keep the shoulders plugged into the body, but at the same time, stretch those elbows further away. So you're creating a little bit of space across the upper back body between the shoulder blades. You'll take a big breath in here, sit up a little taller, and then as you exhale, you begin to tuck your chin into your chest and round forward. Draw those pinky fingers down toward the thighs, and then pause here. Take a few breaths, feel the breath flow into that upper back, into the shoulder blades. Notice if you have any tightness or tension there, you probably do, I do. <laughs> and just take some nice deep breaths here. Notice what you could soften. Maybe the shoulders can drift away from the ears. Take one more breath here. And then inhale to make your way back up to sitting. And then slowly release the arms, stretch them way back out to the sides, fingers spread wide, thumbs pointing up toward the sky. Yeah, take a big breath in, reach the backs of the hands toward the wall behind you, and then exhale, hug yourself. This time the left arm comes on the top. Again, reaching back for the shoulder blades. You can stay just like this, or you can release the hands, back to the hands to touch, or the palms. Plug the shoulders into the body, and then press the elbows forward away from you, so creating a little space there. Let's take one more breath like this. Sit up really nice and tall. Exhale, tuck the chin, and round forward, drawing the pinky fingers toward the thighs and the knees. And pause here, take a few breaths. Notice what you could soften, what you could let go of. Coming back to that concept of Santosha. Notice how you feel on the inside. What are you grateful for here, right here, right now? Next time you inhale, come on back up, reach the fingers to the sky, and then gently unwind, reach the arms out to the sides. Once again, big stretch here. 
And then from here, you're gonna flip your thumbs down, the backs of the hands face the wall behind you, and then reach behind you. Take hold of either opposite wrists or opposite elbows behind you. Just allow the shoulders to open. Just take a moment here to sit and relax. Let the heart be nice and open. Let's take a big deep breath in here and a big deep breath out. And then gently release those arms. You can wiggle the fingers a little bit, roll the wrists, open and close the hands. And then again, we'll come off of what we're sitting on, whatever you're sitting on, you can move it off to the side now and come into hands and knees. So come to your tabletop. You set yourself up here, shoulders right over wrists, hips right over knees, spread the fingers really nice and wide here. And then take a moment to root down through the whole hand, the heel of the hand, the palm, the knuckles, all the way to each fingertip. And feel, once again, take a moment to feel that earth underneath you, pressing back at you. On your next inhale, we're gonna move into uh, cat, uh, sorry, we're gonna move toward cow. We're gonna inhale to lift the tailbone, press the belly down, open the heart, and lift the gaze into your cow shape. And then as you exhale, you'll tuck the tailbone under, hollow out the belly, drop the head, gaze back at your navel into cat. Inhale, tailbone lifts back up, back to cow. Belly presses down, lift the gaze, heart opens. Exhale, spine round, navel pulls in, gaze back toward the navel. And then go ahead and keep moving here a few more times through cat and cow, just gently waking up the spine here. Moving with your breath, taking the full inhale to come toward cow, and then the full exhale to come into cat. Let's do one more round here. And then come to pause in the middle here, come to a neutral spine. From here, you're gonna stretch the right leg back behind you. And bring the ball of the foot to the floor and just take a moment to rock forward and back here. Just gently uh, massaging the ball of the foot and the toes, stretching out the hamstring a little bit. I probably feel really good after all that cross-legged and virasana sitting we did. And then pause in the middle here. You're gonna take, pick up your left toes and just gently rotate them out toward the left side of your mat, making a little kickstand. You're gonna spin onto the sole of the right foot. So kind of a warrior two foot, wind up parallel with the back of the mat. Press down into the left hand. And with an inhale, float the right hand up to the sky. Keep those fingers spread wide open up the heart here and then flip the right palm toward the top of the mat and stretch the right arm long beside the right ear keep that right foot pressing into the floor as you stretch through the right fingertips creating some length on the right side of your body yeah maybe you can stretch a little bit further stay with your breath here and then you'll inhale to reach the right fingertips back to the sky. As you exhale, unwind, come back to your tabletop spine, wag your tail a few times, side to side. And then when you're ready, you'll extend the left leg long, bring the ball of the foot to the floor. Take a moment to rock forward and back, over the ball of the foot, over the toes. And then pause here, pick up the right toes, spin them out toward the right edge of your mat, spin onto the sole of the left foot, so plant the left foot on the floor, press into the right hand, and on an inhale, stretch the left fingers to the sky. 
really open up the front body here. So press into the right hand and use the left fingers to reach even higher towards the sky, really opening you up here. And then flip that left palm towards the top of the mat, stretch it long beside the left ear. Feel that connection all the way from the left foot through the left fingertips. Take some big breaths here. Stretching out that whole left side body. Stretch a little bit further through those left fingertips. Nice. And then inhale the left fingers back to the sky. Exhale, unwind. Come back to your tabletop. Wag your tail side to side. Maybe circle the hips a little bit. Take any more movements from here that you'd like to explore. And then from here, you'll plant the weight into the hands once again. Really spread the fingers wide, root down. We'll tuck the toes under behind you and then slowly lift the hips up and back. Make your way into your downward facing dog. And take a moment here. It's your first downward dog of practice. Maybe you pedal out the feet a few times. Yeah. Maybe you switch the hips back and forth, side to side. I always say this is a great spot to open up your mouth really wide, stretch out your jaw, smooth it around, puff up the cheeks. And then go ahead and pause, find some stillness here. Take a deep, full breath in. Open up the mouth and exhale with a sigh. Yeah. Next time you inhale, come all the way forward into a high plank pose. That's the top of a push-up. Shoulders over wrists. Start to feel your belly engaging here. Keep pressing into the hands. Give yourself some power there. Nice and open heart here. Open shoulders. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, lower the knees to the mat. Lift the hips up high and bend the elbows. Lower the chest and the chin to the mat. Come to Ashta Pranam, eight point prayer pose. Inhale, slide forward to your belly. Untuck the back toes. Lift the head and the heart into Lagu Bhujangasana, baby cobra. Exhale, release the head back down. Press your way back. Come into hands and knees. And then from here, we're going to go right back into a child's pose. So you can widen the knees a little bit if you like. Bring the big toes to touch. Sit the hips back to the heels. And then inch those fingertips out as far as you can away from you. You can release the forehead all the way to the floor. If the ground feels like it's far away, you can reach for your pillow or your blanket. Gently slide it underneath the forehead here. Point being, just make sure your forehead is resting on something. You want to be really kind to yourself here in this shape. And take a moment, come back to the breath. Notice your breath here. Notice if maybe it's something in the breath has shifted a little bit since we started moving. start to slide your right hand, uh, no, your left hand in towards you. Bring it in about halfway. Flip the palm up and then thread that left arm underneath the right, coming to bring the left cheek all the way down to the mat. Again, you may need something to prop up on here. That's okay. Taking a gentle twist here. Keeping those right fingertips reaching for the top of the mat. It might feel nice to tent the fingertips. You could lift up the right palm a little bit. Find your breath here. And then begin to slide the right hand in toward your face. Bring it in about halfway so you can plant that right hand into the floor. And with a big inhale, press into the right hand, unfurl your twist, and reach that left hand all the way up to the sky. Open up the heart here. 
and then we'll exhale to unwind come back to your child's pose both arms out long in front of you you'll slide the right hand in about halfway flip the palm up thread the right arm underneath the left coming to thread the needle on the other side here you can walk those left fingers forward maybe even tend the hand so press into the fingers see kind of a spider-man hand here Begin to slide that left palm in towards you just about halfway press down into the left hand big inhale unwind your twist reach the right fingers to the sky open up your heart exhale unwind one more breath here come back to your child's pose and then begin to press into the hands lift your way up out of your child's pose come back to your tabletop position and then tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and back, finding downward facing dog. Take a bend into both knees here, gaze forward toward the hands and walk the feet all the way to the top of your mat. When you get here, come to land in a ragdoll shape. You can heel toe the feet out a little bit, bend into the knees. Just let yourself dangle forward. Let the kinks hang out of the spine. You might take hold of opposite elbows and sway from side to side. You might interlace the hands behind you, stretch out the shoulders, just let everything hang. Maybe back of the head is your thing. And then release whatever you're holding on to. Take a nice deep full breath in. As you exhale, bend deeply into your knees and slowly, vertebra by vertebra, roll up to standing. So let the head arrive very last. When you got there, give the shoulders a big roll forward, up, back, and down. And step the feet into Tadasana at the top of your mat. So they could be, the feet could be hip width distance apart, they could be all the way touching or they could be somewhere in between and you decide where the feet go and then root down into those feet feel the earth underneath you feel your whole body grow a little taller standing tall and open here in your tadasana mountain pose take a moment notice how you are And then on your next inhale, you'll slowly begin to sweep the arms out and all the way up, press the palms above you. As you exhale, you'll fold in half over your legs. Come to Uttanasana, let the head be heavy again. We'll inhale to come up halfway here, find a nice long spine, stretch it out. As you exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms and step the left leg long behind you, coming into a lunge. Keep the back knee lifted just for a moment as you settle into the pose and then gently lower the back knee down. You can untuck the toes here and on an inhale, stretch the arms up alongside your ears. You can go ahead and sink the hips down toward the earth. Let the shoulders be soft. Let the heart be open. Allow the breath to soften you here. Notice what you're grateful for in this shape. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, let the hips sink a little lower. And then the next inhale, reach through the fingertips, grow tall in the spine. As you exhale, draw the hands down, frame the foot, tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee, step it back, find your high plank pose, top of a push up, belly engages. Take a deep breath in here. As you exhale, lower the knees, the chest, the chin, come back to Ashta Pranam. Inhale, come forward to the belly, untuck the toes, lift the head and the heart, open heart here in Lagu Bhujangasana. Exhale, head comes down, press your way back, hands and knees, and then downward facing dog. 
Next time you inhale, you'll lift the right leg up and back. You'll bend the knee, stack the hip here for a moment. Let that right foot dangle toward the earth behind you. Yeah, open it up. And then inhale back to square. Exhale, bend the knee, step the foot forward between the hands once again. And then we'll lower the back knee down, untuck the toes, lift the arms up alongside the ears. This time we're gonna let the hips Lift it a little bit because you want this right leg to be in a 90 degree angle. You're going to bring the hands to heart center. Take a big inhale. And as you exhale, take a twist. You're going to press the left elbow into the outer right thigh and then press the heart into the hands. Deep breaths here. Connect with your breath. And then we'll inhale to unwind. Reach the arms up one more time. Inhale, exhale, hands come down. Frame the front foot. Tuck your back toes under, lift the back knee. See if you can step, uh, engage the belly. See if you can step that left foot all the way up to meet the right. With an inhale, bring both palms to the shins. Find a long spine. Big exhale, fold, inhale. We'll inhale, sweep the arms out and all the way up, palms press, exhale, hands to heart center. We'll inhale, arms out and up, palms press above you, exhale, fold in half over your legs, head is heavy. Inhale, come on up halfway, palms to shin. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step the right leg back behind you this time. Coming to lunge with your left foot forward. Pause here with the knee lifted just for a moment. Let yourself settle into the shape. And then when you're ready, drop your back knee down, untuck the toes, and then lift the arms way up alongside the ears. And then go ahead and sink down. Allow yourself to just relish in this shape. Yeah. Soften your shoulders. Let's take an inhale here. Exhale, sink the hips a little deeper. Inhale, stretch through the fingertips, grow long. Exhale, hands come down, frame the front foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step back, find your high plank, top of your push-up. Belly nice and strong. Take another inhale here. Exhale, lower one more time, the knees, the chest, and the chin, Ashtapranam. Inhale, come forward, untuck the toes. Lift the head, lift the heart, squeeze the elbows together behind you. Exhale, head comes down, press your way back, and find your way to downward facing dog. You'll inhale the left leg up and back, bend the knee, stack the hip, open it up here. Yeah. And then inhale to square the hips, exhale, bend the knee, step the foot forward. Lower the back knee down, untuck the toes. Once again, inhale the arms by the ears. Again, making sure this front leg is in a 90 degree angle here. We'll bring the hands to heart center, press them together. Take a big inhale here, big exhale, take your twist. Press the right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Press the heart into the hands. Press the feet into the earth. The left foot, the right top of the foot, press them down. Find your breath. And then inhale, unwind, reach the arms back up by the ears, exhale, hands come down. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, engage the belly, step all the way forward to the top of the mat. When you get there, bring the palms to the shins, find a long spine. Exhale, fold in half. We'll inhale to sweep the arms out and all the way up, palms press. Exhale, hands come to heart center. And back down by your sides, Tadasana. Deep breath in, deep breath out. 
Notice how you feel. Inhale, arms out and up. Once again, palms press above your head. Exhale, fold in half, Uttanasana. Inhale, come up halfway, long spine. This time, exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step right back to your high plank. So from here, you're welcome to lower knees, chest, and chin as we've been doing before, or if you'd like to take it up a notch, you can start to practice chaturanga. So for chaturanga here, you'll inhale. As you exhale, you'll bend the elbow, keep those elbows in toward yourself, in toward your body. Inhale to slide forward, come to the tops of the feet and the hands, open up the heart here. Then as you exhale, lift the hips, roll over the toes, and make your way back to downward dog. Pause here for a couple of breaths. Lifting up and out, away from the hands. Next inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. This time you can step or you could hop forward toward the top of your mat, your choice. Inhale, the palms to the shins, come up halfway. Exhale, fold in half. Inhale, Sweep the arms out and up alongside the ears, palms press. Exhale, hands to heart center. And back down by your sides, Tadasana. From here, bring your hands to your hips. And you're going to start to pour some weight into that right foot. You'll bend the left knee, flip it out to the side. Bring the left heel toward the right ankle. We're coming to tree pose here. So this is tree pose right here, just as we are. If you want to take it a little further, you can lift the foot up to the calf or maybe even lift it all the way to the inner thigh. Keep that right foot pressing down. Keep the left foot, wherever it is, press it into the leg. It can be anywhere on the leg, but don't press into it. Don't have it over the knee. You don't want to put any pressure on your knee. And then get your balance. It's okay if you're near a piece of furniture or a wall, you can use that to help you out here. <clears throat> if you're okay here, you can bring the palms to press at heart center, or you could even start to grow your tree branches with the fingertips toward the sky. Yeah, and take a moment here. Balancing poses are up in places where <clears throat> you feel the least content, at least I do. So just take a moment to explore that right here, right now. Maybe you've, maybe you're struggling and you've taken it a little bit too far for today. Maybe you wanna come back to, you know, a different um, variation of the pose. And maybe that would feel great. And maybe that's all that matters. Take one more breath wherever you are. And then as you exhale, draw the hands back to your heart and gently release that left foot down, release the hands. Go ahead and pedal out the feet, roll the ankles. <clears throat> and then come back to Tadasana. Do the second side. So bring the hands back to the hips. This time pour some weight into the left foot. Bend the right knee, turn that knee out to the side, bring the heel to the ankle. Stay here or lift up the right foot to the inner calf or maybe all the way up to the inner thigh. Yeah, bring the hands to heart center here. If you're okay here, you might grow your tree branches. Once again, find a, find a spot to stop along the way here that feels just right for you. Yeah. Finding that contentment from the inside out. Take one more breath here. If you haven't already, draw the hands back to the heart. 
bring them back to the hips, release the foot down, pedal out the feet, release the hands. Yeah. And then come on back to Tadasana at the top of your mat. From here, we'll come to bend into the knees, sink the hips, sweep the arms forward and up, finding Utkatasana, a chair pose. So engage the belly, tuck the tailbone under just slightly, and then sit down and back a little further. Really sink those hips. Let the weight be back into the heels of the feet. And then sweep the arms up, open up the heart. Find your breath here. Let's take one more breath. And then exhale to lengthen the legs, fold in half. Give yourself a little stretch here, another extra breath. Next inhale, bring the palms to the shins, come up about halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step it back and flow through a vinyasa of your choice, either knees, chest and shins, or chaturanga to upward dog. We'll all meet in a downward facing dog. Next inhale, float the right leg up and back. As you exhale, you'll bend the knee, step the foot all the way through to the top of your mat. Heel spin the back heel down, set up for warrior two. So that means that the front heel is gonna line up with the back arch. You're gonna press down into the feet, lead with the left hand as you reverse cartwheel your way all the way up into Virabhadrasana two. Stretch the fingertips out wide, press the feet into the earth, feel that earth underneath you. Gaze out over those front fingertips, maybe even the, just the front middle finger. Let everything else blur out of focus for a moment. Beautiful. On an inhale, come to straighten the front leg. We'll move into triangle. So start to shift the hips back toward the wall behind you as you reach the right fingertips forward. Get as long as you can here out of your hips and then reach down, find your shin, open up the heart, lift the gaze up to find that left thumb. Keep the feet pressing into the floor. You could gaze up at your thumb or you could gaze down at the floor. It is up to you, maybe out of horizon. Find what feels good for you, what feels good from the inside out. On your next inhale, press into the feet, engage the belly, lead with the left hand, come all the way up to stand. Bring the hands to the hips here and turn the right toes to face the wall left side of your mat. So the feet come parallel now, maybe even slightly pigeon toes. You'll take a big breath in to stand up nice and tall. Maybe squeeze the elbows towards each other behind you. And as you exhale, you'll hinge forward and fold into Prasarita Pada Konasana. When you get to the bottom, release the hands. If the floor feels like it's far away, here's the Another spot for your pillow. You can bring your hands onto your pillow or a blanket or blocks if you have them. And then let the crown of the head be heavy. You might line up the fingertips with the toe tips or maybe the heels of the hands with the heels of the feet. Shift some weight into the balls of your feet and then let yourself fold a little further. Begin to walk the hands back out in front of you so that they're kind of underneath your face. And then from here, bring the hands up to the hips. You'll soften the knees here, lift yourself all the way back up to stand. Take a moment. From here, turn the right toes back toward the top of the mat. You'll bend into the front knee. You'll open up the arms, come into warrior two. 
flip the front palm now, stretch forward and then reach up and back, radiate your warrior. Breathe into that right side body, keep that front knee bending nice and deep. And then big inhale lifts you back up, big exhale cartwheels you all the way down. Spin onto the ball of the back foot. <clears throat> Here, come into a lunge. You're gonna walk that right foot all the way out to the right side of your mat, and then bring both hands to the inside. Come into a lizard lunge. Spread the fingers out really wide, press into the hands. Take a moment here, open up those hips. Yeah. If you wanna take it further, you can go down onto your forearms here. Otherwise, just stay here with your hands on the mat. You could lower the back knee down if you like. You can stretch it out. Take some breaths here. And then once again, option to lower the back knee down here. You're gonna press into the left palm. And on a big inhale, you're gonna stretch that right finger, the right fingertips up to the sky. Big open twist here. Open up the heart. Let the back of the right hand drift back behind you. Open up a little further. Take a big breath in here. And then exhale to slowly unwind. Reach the fingers down to the floor. Listen carefully, we're gonna do that again. Inhale, sweep the right fingers to the sky, open up the heart, and then move with your breath as you exhale, unwind your twist, right fingers to the mat. One more time, we'll inhale. We'll get into it there, and then exhale to unwind. Plant the palms here, tap the back toes, lift the back knee, and then step that right foot back to meet the left. Come into either straight to your downward facing dog, or you can flow here through a vinyasa of your choice. We'll meet in a downward facing dog. Deep breath in here, deep breath out. Next inhale, float the left leg up and back. Exhale, bend the knee, step the foot forward. We're setting up warrior two on this side. Spin the back heel down, front heel back arch alignment, and then lead with the right hand as you reverse cartwheel your way up into Virabhadrasana two. Again, gazing out over those front fingers. Feel your body here. Feel the feet pressing into the floor. Feel the fingers stretching apart in two opposite directions. Feel how big you are here. Feel the strength of this pose. Feel the softness of the pose. Soften your shoulders and soften your face. On an inhale, lengthen the front leg long. Start to kick those hips back toward the wall behind you. Reach through the left fingers, get so long here, and then reach down, find your shin, Open up the heart into Uttita Trikonasana, Triangle Pose. Find your breath. And then next inhale, engage the belly, press into the feet, lift the right fingertips to lift you all the way up to stand. We'll bring the hands to the hips. Once again, turn the left toes to face the long edge of your mat. And we're gonna take another forward fold here. Option to interlace the hands behind yourself. Take, a, take an inhale to lift up, lengthen the spine, and then exhale to fold in half, bringing those fists up and overhead with you. If this is too much on the shoulders, uh, once you get down here, feel free to release that and just bring the hands to the floor as we did before. Or you can find some other variation that you love, maybe bring the hands to the 
ankles or the big toes. And then next time you inhale, come on up to stand. If your fists are, if your hands are clasped, use that strength to carry you all the way up to stand. If you had the hands on the floor, bring the hands to the hips first. And then when you get here, release the hands. Spin the left toes back to the top of the mat. Open up the arms. Sink down warrior two. We'll flip the front palm, reach forward and then up and back. Radiate your warrior. Bend deeply into that front knee. You can reach through the left fingertips. And then big inhale brings you back up. Big exhale spins you down. Spin onto the ball of the back foot. Heel toe that left foot all the way over to the left edge of your mat, coming into a lizard lunge. Hands on the floor, fingers spread wide. Again, take whatever variation here feels best. You might lower the back knee down. You might come down onto the forearms. You might walk the hands around somewhere else. Kind of feel your way into the shape. When you find your sweet spot, pause there and breathe. Swami Rama said, contentment is falling in love with your life. So perhaps here on our yoga mats where we're kind of strip down to our roots. We can find a calm center, notice what's important, and notice how we can fall in love with our lives. Once again, invitation to lower the back knee down. Pour some weight into the right hand this time and on a big inhale, open up into your twist, open up the heart, let the heart spin toward the sky. Big breath in here, big breath out as you unwind, reach the fingertips to the floor. Once again, we're going to move with the breath, inhale, sweep the fingertips all the way up to the sky, exhale to unwind. One more time, really moving with the breath. And exhale, bring both hands to the mat, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee if it's not there already, and then step back. Option for one final vinyasa here. Or option to go straight to downward dog. Press into the hands, lift those hips up and back, stretch out the spine. Notice the sensation here in the spine after all that twisting and hip opening. Maybe it feels different than your last downward dog. And then with an inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step or hop to the top of your mat. Come to land in a little squat position here, and then just come to have a seat on your mat. Yeah. And then from here, we're going to make our way to lie all the way down on the mat. And come into constructive rest with the feet on the floor, the arms by your sides. And just take a moment here. Notice the body here in stillness. Feel the sensation, the vibration of the movement kind of rolling through the body. Notice your breath. Notice how you are right here in this moment. And then we're going to come to set up for a few back bends here. So you're going to bring the feet to the floor. You're going to bring the arms long by your sides. You'll press down into the feet 
And on a big inhale, you'll lift the hips up off of the mat, coming into Satu Bandasana, a bridge pose. Yeah, so let's take it gently here to start. Keep pressing into the feet, lift the hips, engage those inner thighs. Imagine them moving in towards each other, really stabilizing those thigh bones. Take one more inhale here, and then exhale slowly lower all the way down to the mat. If it would feel nice, you could windshield wiper the knees from side to side a few times. We're gonna do two more back bends today. So I'll offer some options. If you want to practice another bridge pose like we just did, um, that's option one. <clears throat> option two is if you have a block with you or if you have something you can stack up enough to come into a supported bridge, you could do that. So take your block or your pillow or your blanket and slide it under the hips to give yourself a little lift. And you can just kind of hang out here in this position. So really nice supported back bend. Option three I'll offer today is Urdhva Dhanurasana. It's an upward bow pose. Um, so if you'd like to practice that, I will talk you through it. If you're going to go into bridge or supported bridge, you can head there now. For those wanting to practice Urdhva Dhanurasana, You'll walk the heels in as close as you can get to the sitting bones here. You'll take the hands, bring them up by the ears, and point the fingers toward the shoulders. Hopefully you can see me well enough here. And then on a big inhale, you'll press down into the feet, press into the hands, and lift everything up into Urdhva Dhanurasana. Again, whichever pose you're in, keep those inner thighs engaged, moving in towards each other. And then when you're ready, come on all the way down. You can stay up for a few more breaths if you like, or make your way down. If you're in supported bridge, you can stay there. Maybe windshield wiper the knees in between. And then when you're ready, come to set up for that third back bend. Bringing the feet in close. Either heading into another Urdhva Dhanurasana, upward bow, or heading into another bridge pose here. And again, if you're in a supported bridge, you can just go ahead and stay there. Take one more inhale wherever you are, and we'll all start to make our way all the way down onto the back. Hug the knees into your chest when you get here, and then rock gently side to side across the low back. So gently let both knees drift over to the left. We're going to come and do a twist here. So stack the knees, stack the hips. Open up the right arm, either all the way to a full T or maybe to a cactus shape. Allow the breath to travel all the way to the belly. Take a moment here, notice how you are. Notice the times of the practice when you felt content. And notice the times when maybe you didn't. Be really curious about that. Perhaps diving into that later, journaling about it, or kind of keeping it in mind throughout your day. With the next inhale, draw the knees back up to center. Pause for a moment in the middle here. And then when you're ready, hug the knees into your chest. Let the knees drop to the right. Open up your left arm. Come 
What a deep breath. As you sink into the shape. Notice what you could soften here, what you could let go of. Maybe the fingers and toes, skin on the face. Next inhale, lift the knees back to center. Give yourself a squeeze here. And then very gently begin to roll forward and back along the spine, eventually making your way all the way up to sit. I'm going to stretch the legs out long in front of you, flex the feet, reach the toes back towards your face. Take a big inhale, stretch the arms by the ears, big exhale, fold forward. Taking hold wherever you can, maybe it's the feet or maybe it's the shins or the knees. Let's go ahead and find your level of comfort here. With an inhale, stretch the crown of the head a little closer to the toes. And with an exhale, sink a little deeper. Take one more breath here and then gently release all the way back up to sitting and then come to find your way back into a comfortable cross-legged seat. Maybe you're sitting up on top of something or maybe you're just sitting here on your mat. Just gonna go through just another couple rounds of Nadi Shodhana. So flip that left palm. Bring the thumb and the forefinger to touch. Reach the right hand up in front of your face, make a fist, release the thumb and the ring finger and pinky. Ring finger goes outside the left nostril, thumb goes outside the right. Let's take a big deep breath through both nostrils. And a deep breath out, exhale completely. Next inhale. Close the right nostril with the thumb. Inhale through the left for a count of four, three, two, one. Close the left, exhale out the right for four. Inhale through the right side for four. Close the right side, exhale out the left for four. And then continue on your own, just for a few more rounds here. The next time you exhale through the left side, can be finished. No rush to get there. Bring both hands to the thighs here just for a moment. Close the eyes and notice. Notice the body. Notice the breath. Notice the things right here in this moment that you're grateful for. Open your heart to those, those things. A 
and then with as little fuss as possible, I'll invite you to come off of what you're sitting on and make your way back to lie down in Shavasana. Begin to spread out the feet and the arms as wide as you like, or maybe you keep them in closer today if you like, it's up to you. You might take a blanket and um, roll it up, place it under the knees if you like. Maybe it um, feels good for you. It takes a lot of extra support here to help the low back to release. Um, it might also feel nice to take a blanket and just place it over top of you for a little extra weight. Tilt the palms up to the sky. Let's all take a deep, full inhale. And a deep exhale. Let yourself get a little heavier on the earth here. Let the earth do her job and hold you up. You guys are going to stay here for a few moments. I'm going to pop up to sitting here, but you stay right where you are in Shavasana. We'll be here for about five minutes. So allow the body to fully be at rest. Allow the mind to stop turning, to come to stillness and join the body and rest for a few last few moments here on your mat. I'll leave you here with a poem that I think is very applicable to the concept of Santosha. Um, you may have heard it already. It's called The Guest House and it's by Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond.
slowly begin to deepen your breath. Gently wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, circle wrists and ankles. Let the head turn from side to side. May feel nice to stretch the arms way up alongside the ears. Give yourself a big whole body stretch. And then when you're ready, bend into one knee and then the other and slowly roll onto your right side and pause here for a moment. Crawl up, give yourself a hug. Take this moment to find some big gratitude. First, thanking yourself for carving out this time in your day to come to your mat to do something just for you, taking care of yourself. Also thanking and honoring your beautiful body for all that it is capable of and all that it does for us every single day, 24 hours a day. And then think of one other thing in your life that you'll that you're grateful for. Something that's unique to you. Gently begin to press into the palms and build your way up to find a comfortable seat. We'll gather the hands at heart center, gently lift your heart and bow your head, pausing one last time to feel your entire body. We'll lift the thumbs up to find the third eye. Lift your gaze and your heart toward the sky, a gesture of inviting goodness and light. And then we'll fold all the way forward to seal in the practice. Namaste. Thank you so, so much, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy and safe and um, making all kinds of discoveries during this slow down time that we have. Um, please check out uh, the website, the Mind Body Wake Up Yoga website. Um, there's so many wonderful classes being held both live and uh, pre-recorded from so many of our wonderful teachers. Um, so check them out too. And I invite you to get on your mat as much as possible during this time. Um, I know it's been helping me immensely. Um, so I will see you again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day.